pointing to the cloud. Hi everyone, welcome to um, OLS 3 week 13. This is, I guess, not a regular cohort call, but rather a skill up call. And we have a very exciting um, skill that uh, we have a very um, just awesome guest speaker will be joining us and sharing his experience in this area. Uh, anyway, before we head into that, um, little reminder that we will have we have a code of conduct uh, operating uh, in this call. So um, generally, if you experience or witness any unacceptable behaviors or have other concerns, um, you are more than welcome to contact the organizers at team at openlifescience.org or you, if you wish to email one of the members individually, um, all of our email addresses are also on the agenda now in the middle of page two. As I was saying, uh, very, very delighted and honored to have uh, Dasepta with us today. Uh, we will be talking about sketch noting and visual storytelling. Um, we're also going to try for the first time to do this in a slightly different format, uh, which is a sort of live interview. So I've um, previously sent some questions to the scepter and we're, I'm going to ask those questions. But when we, as we begin to talk, if you have other questions that you would like to ask as well, please do put them on the agenda. I believe there is a question section after this, which is currently towards the bottom of page four. If you, or you can put your questions in the Zoom chat and I can also ask them. So I hope that's clear. Uh, without further ado, um, yeah, the Sapta, if you want to quickly introduce yourself. Okay, now I'm nervous. <laughs> so for the record, uh, it's uh, the first time for me to, to, I wouldn't call it to teach how to draw, but to share my experience in drawing. This is the first time, so that's why I'm very nervous about it. Thank you, Emmy, for making me nervous. <laughs> so uh, my name is Dasapta. My background is geology. And during my uh, study, until I get my PhD in 2009, uh, I focusing, I'm focusing my research on hydrogeology. So I study groundwater and hydrochemistry and try to analyze the chemical of the water to, to understand the hydrogeological behavior of the water. So that's my formal uh, sort of uh, expertise, if you might say that. And this is my orchid link. I will share the, the slide after the after this talk and put it in the google docs i think that's that's all amy from me i am on mute awesome thank you um yeah so just curious you know with with your research and how did you get introduced to open science okay so I have this narrative uh, in, in, in text, but I will try to uh, draw, draw it myself. So uh, it started in, in 20, uh, 2013. Uh, this is me. This is me in my boredom stage. So I got my PhD and <clears throat> And I, I'm busy uh, with my research and also in management of my university. And then I'm sort of got boredom of, of how we, we assess our research, right? So this is how I draw research assessment. So this is, um, we, put more things in prestige than in, in the substantial aspect of our research. That uh, the first thing that came to my mind in 2013. Um, before 2013, I also, I'm 
one of those people who keen in sending uh, my articles in in high impact journals, which is uh, most of it is uh, was rejected by by the journal, of course. But I I did uh, publish, I think two uh, two articles in hydrogeology that managed to go to Springer and Elsevier. So before 2013, I was those those people as well. So and then I met a blog right, written by this guy. I met him first with his with his mohawk uh, hair right, with uh, rebellion style t-shirt and, and the 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 man the person that I meet met online is John Dunham right, and he managed to write a very res uh, resourceful and very very interesting blog on uh, let's see what I draw correctly on uh, Crocodile. <laughs> this is how I wrote crocodile. So the 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 person John Denham is a paleontologist, and he studied crocodile for his master and PhD. So I thought uh, uh, he was. I never seen a paleontologist that as passionate as him right, to share his thoughts and and his research in in most uh, interesting way. And then I think it was him that, only him that erasing all the, the writings in his CV. You know, when you have this CV, you, you write your articles and then where you publish it. And he just put it the list on the art, the list of the articles that he wrote and then erase all the the journal names, right? So I I asked him why, and then he he said, um, so I, I will let people to judge my writings uh, after they reading it, not based on the journal where where it published. So I think this guy is very weird. So I keep following him. Uh, uh, in his blog and his tweets. So that's how I introduced to uh, the world of open science. And then, and then in 20, 2017, I started a preprint server right, with COS right, in archive with COS. And then in 2020, uh, I moved this, the service to Indonesia to, to this name. Yeah. Of course, I, I get help by uh, people, uh, many people in Indonesia uh, to start, start up this preprint servers with collaboration with LIPI. LIPI is Indonesian Science Institute. So it's this is a government institute. So that's how I uh uh join this movement emmy thank you um it's really inspir inspiring to see how you got from you know hearing these stories and enjoying your story as well i mean the, the yo says this that's an incredible life drawing crocodile definitely <laughs> <laughs> love it um yeah and and that you that motivated you and you kept following and learning and started your own initiative in, in indonesia where you are as well so um what about the sketch noting when did you why did you start and sort of what motivated yeah. you to keep doing this Okay, um, that's also started with my boredom, right? To write uh, PowerPoint slide. Uh, I just got very, very 
for to to open PowerPoint and then just type typing text and then I see this YouTube channel called Purple to Visual. You you can search it on, on in YouTube. Um, the channel was started I think back in twenty. I don't know, maybe 2015, 2016. It's about uh, this person who draw um, on top of a piece of paper and then he set up a nice camera on top of this desk and share it in, on YouTube. And I, I saw him and then I tried to make this, this simple mind maps. So whenever I present something, I make this one. Whenever I uh, teach, instead of uh, uh, writing on PowerPoint, I share the PowerPoint to my students, but but uh, live uh, in class, I just pick up uh, a marker or a chalkboard and then start to draw this thing. And then when you do this, the same thing over and over again, and then you start to get bored so I, I i'm guessing that i i'm a person that get bored fast <laughs> so when i do something the same thing over and over again i started to uh, think how do i how can i make this more interesting so i start to make daily stuff right this is pencil and then this is Caesar, right? Um, just simple uh, everyday stuff to add to my sketch note. And then how then I came up with this picture, which is related to your question, next question. <laughs> <laughs> You're ahead of me. No, great. It's really fantastic to see that you're strive for to communicate better and better and make your, you know, your what you're trying to say more yeah. and more interesting for the audience. So yeah, I was gonna ask, you know, what your favorite sketch note that you've you've drawn um, to this day yeah. is, or are. Yeah. If if I may, if I if you let me choose two uh, sketch notes, then then I I chose this two sketch notes, which both are not from my original uh, uh, thinking or, or statement. One is this one. It was uh, an article by Jordan Baker. She was covering a story about uh, the vice chancellor of Australian National University. It's Brian Smith. Uh, he, he is a Nobel laureate in physics right? in 20. 2011, if I'm not mistaken. And this Brian Smith said that uh, global rankings are distorting universities' decisions, which, which is very much uh, aligned with my original uh, concern uh, uh, in, in the previous slides when I started this in 2013. So global rankings are distorting university decision. And then I start to think, how can I draw something that distort enough? <laughs> to, and then, and also uh, represent the word global, right? And then, and then I came up with this uh, sort of map or globes, which Indonesia map on a focus. And then, how should I uh, draw the distorting part? How, uh, who's going to distort the, the picture? And then I'm. I'm, I came with this uh, concept, which is also written in the in the articles, uh, uh, university rankings, and then the fundings, and the workloads, and other rankings, and global market, and so on. And keep pulling this globe around, and then it uh, and it looks like right now, right? Distorted. The second one is this one. It was uh, based on. John Tennant uh, articles. By the way, John Tennant is passed away in 2020, last year, last year in April 9th. 9th. 
Uh, this is one of this, his article. Uh, the, the title is this one, Let's Stop the Exploitation of Free Academic Labor. So I also think, how can I draw this? And then I was watching this National Geographic episode about Egypt and this pharaoh, pharaoh and this pyramid. And then I started to think, why, why don't I uh, uh, draw Egyptian, right? Egyptian culture, Egyptian environment. And then I experiment with several uh, drawings. So drawing like this, I sometimes I did not, uh, I, I, I did not complete it. I cannot complete it in just one go. Uh, this drawing of Anubis, I think this is the, the seven, seven trials of drawing Anubis from different uh, sources. And then I try to put this Anubis into this layout in people building pyramid, pyramids. And then, yeah, I came up with this one. When uh, in old times, people are, are forced to build something big for, for their uh, leaders, right? And then, this situation is is continuing right now as we speak. <laughs> so, and then the, the funny thing is when I share this this uh, drawings in Twitter, and then uh, more people and then keep asking me and they grow this conversation about uh, whether in old days the Egyptian is is. The, it was the slaves who built the pyramids. They, they digging up about those stories and then they came up with several theory. So that's how this, this drawing can engage more people to, to yeah, engage in the conversation with us. And also I, I okay, you, you can continue with your question. <laughs> Sorry. No, I just want to say it's really, I mean, I think you're incredibly just, it just amazed me how you managed to pull, you know, things that you see from different places and, and yeah. combine it into, yeah. you know, a, a strong narrative. And I'm going to, I think along these lines, um, Hilya asks, um, it's, a, it's a question from Hilya. Uh, saw your sketch notes posted daily on Twitter and the Telegram channel. How do you yeah. find or get ideas for the sketch notes? Okay. Uh, okay. This the, the idea. The idea is, was actually coming from my difficulties in finding uh, open source picture, right? Especially in geology. If you search for Lambang Fault, that's a fault that uh, located in Indonesia. It's very difficult, but if you uh, try to look for San Andreas Fault, which, which is in America, and then you start it, you, you, you will get so many open source uh, pictures yeah, on those, um, on, the, on a specific object. And then I started to think, why, if, why don't I share this, this picture? Everything that I draw, everything that I sketch, uh, as an open source, uh, open source uh, drawing. And then I started to share all my drawings and write it, uh, the CCO uh, writing here, as a sign that you, you can do whatever you want with my picture. And then uh, I, I learned about Wikimedia Commons and I started to upload it, <laughs> upload some of my picture uh, I tend to upload all of them, but it's just too many. Uh, so some of my pictures is al already available on Wikimedia Commons. And then uh, another person suggests, gave suggestion to me. It was Stefania uh, from Open Science TV. And she says that people, she, she know uh, people that an artist and share their their paintings on Telegram channel or in Twitter. 
for how about sharing uh, your my my drawings also in those uh, social media and then why don't I try that as well so I came up with this uh, hashtag 365 figures <laughs> which is uh, I think I I have blanks for several days but I think it less than a week <laughs> up to now during 2021 so the 365 figures I think that that was the story I mean right uh yeah no um just love the that you're sharing your work openly and others can use it as well and yeah. um so if you if you could since you know you've you've got a lot of experience and you know work amazing, um if you could share a few tips um with our participants on you know how you communicate and uh, through sketching how how let's say i've never done this before how do i get started um I think you, the sector, you're on mute if you. Yeah, just create and draw every day. So if you see a calendar here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just draw uh, and share it. You you share your drawing to get to get feedback, to get the first initial comments from people, right? That those initial comments would be the most uh, honest ones in my experience, right? And then uh, try to this, try to find analogy. So if you can find analogy uh, of your uh, materials and, and then you can find several things to simplify the, the materials or the concept that you want to draw. Right. So if you do it daily and then you start to connect the dots faster <laughs> and then you can just draw uh, like you, you never thought about it. <laughs> just, just instinct, drawing instinct, I call it. That's all, I mean. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. practice makes perfect. <laughs> um, that's, that's awesome. Um, folks, we, I, I am aware that we uh, does have to also have to go. Um, uh, if you have any questions for him, um, this is now maybe one more minute. Uh, but I, uh, while you're thinking about your question, uh, which you can put in the Zoom chat or the Google Doc, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Uh, um, Amy, if, yeah. if uh, I would like to add, if you have a question or comments, just leave in the chat and then I will answer it as live drawing and put it on YouTube. That's fantastic. Yeah. That should be enough motivation for everyone to go ask yeah. questions. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so, so much um, uh, for Thank joining you. us and for sharing your experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just love your work and everyone please go follow the set on, on Twitter, of course, and, and uh, on his website and blog as well um, to see more of his work. I'm excited to see what's going to come. Uh, thank you. Um, and I right. hand over to Johan Mavika. Mavika, do you want to do this one or shall I? <laughs> go for it, Yo. You set up everything. Okay, okay, right, folks. So um, again, huge thank you to Desapta for a quite interesting and exciting presentation. Uh, it's not often you get to mix sketchnoting and open science. Um, but what we thought was that it might be nice to actually just give everyone a chance to give it a try themselves. Um, so I don't know if you all have ever used, uh, played maybe Pictionary or Charades or anything like that. Um, but this tends to be where you have to guess uh, at a at a term that some one person in the group is aware of. Uh, so what we've done is we've set up a little uh, application called Scribble, Scribble.io. So if you scroll down now to line uh, to page five, about partway through page five, we have a series of breakout rooms where we've we've set up some open science terms. Uh, and the goal is in the breakout rooms to actually, you'll get given a term, one person will draw and um, 
then the others have to guess and there will actually be like a hangman style blanks along the top of the screen uh, and the idea is that you just type into the chat what you think the thing is whilst people are trying to draw um, so we'll send you all into breakout rooms actually I think probably one breakout room is sufficient I think we'll all fit into the one screen